impacts, at least right now and in recent hours from Ada. Up in Broward County, we've had upwards of 8 to 10 inches of rain. Just checking Fort Lauderdale, they had another 7,900 last hour. They've consistently gusted to 40 miles an hour. So it's really not the wind with Ada that's going to cause the issues. Although we've seen some palm fronds down. Here's one here, here's one here. And they're knocking out some power. It's all about the rainfall. Take a look at the uh, flooding. We shot this earlier. And neighborhoods underwater, streets underwater, waist deep water, water rescues, cars submerged. And some of the areas of Broward County and southern Palm Beach County these are the impacts from Ada, the number one impact, the rain of all. And the watch continues for all this area until Tuesday through Tuesday. But the flash flood warning in those areas goes until at least 1145. I mentioned power outages. Let's see how we're doing right now. 40, just under 45,000 kind of holding steady. They're all down here. And it's all because of the wind and some of these palm fronds coming down. Very wet couple of months here, Lauderdale's had 14, Miami's had 12 inches of rain, and now Lauderdale's up over 85 inches for the year. So it's been a very, very wet year. And notice on the radar, it's just like a big fire hose, this outer rain band well north of the center of Ada, which is now heading across the Middle Keys, has just been you know, bombarding those areas. Lauderdale, uh, Hallandale, up towards, uh, shoot, Boca Raton. Pompano Beach and all the way up to the Palm Beaches, getting a tremendous amount of rain, Dr. Nab. And it's not over there yet because we've got that band just feeding it offshore. Meanwhile, here in South Beach, uh, it's been the charm life so far. We have had hardly a drop of rain in about three hours, but I'm sure we'll get some more rain overnight as the system moves northwest and west into the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, it's amazing how the band set up in certain places persistently and just a few miles separates weaker winds and not a whole lot of rain with really strong winds and flooding rains and life-threatening rains. Let's take a look at the particulars. Again, we're going to get a new advisory from the Hurricane Center in the next few minutes. So stay with us as we update you fully on the track and intensity forecast for the next five days. But in the meantime, realize that the center is down here and about 100 miles north has been the nastiest band where you have a combination of the heaviest rain and the lightning and the strongest winds. That convection will mix down that wind from higher up, and that's where you get the strongest gusts. And with those rain rates of one, two, three or more inches per hour coming in on these bands, we're going to continue to add to the rain totals we've already had, and it's gusting 40 to 50 miles an hour in Broward and Palm Beach counties. Again, there's our flash flood warning. Please stay off the roads in Broward and southern Palm Beach counties. So many reports of water-covered roads and people having to get rescued. Don't put yourself or the first responders into that situation. But look at that heavy rain that has yet to come on shore into these same areas. Areas, over half a foot of rain, as much as 10 inches of rain locally in portions of Broward County today. And again, here's that heavy rain that's two to three inches per hour about to come on shore. So it's only going to get worse. And these bands have a lot of wind. A very recent report in Lake Worth, just south of West Palm Beach, gusted to 54 miles per hour. So other reasons to be off the roads and why there could be some isolated power outages. The flash flood problem will continue into tomorrow morning there in southern Florida and through Tuesday morning through much of southern and central Florida. And Jackie, when it's all added up over the next seven days, a lot of folks in not just Florida, but up in Georgia and the Carolinas could end up getting several inches of rain because Ada is going to be hanging around a while. Yeah, let's talk about where that's going to be going next. Uh, down the line, and we still have some question marks left with this one. Unfortunately, Ada is going to be slowing down after it turns off towards the west. Uh, we think later on for tonight, as we kick off our work week next week, it kind of slows down in this area and is waiting for that trough or that dip in the jet stream off towards the west to help to lift this farther up towards the north. Once we see that northerly turn, we'll have a little bit of a better idea of exactly where this may be going, but it does have its sights perhaps into Florida yet again, especially in the Big Bend area. And either way you slice this, boy, this is still going to bring a ton of tropical moisture that's going to re remain in place across pretty much the entire Sunshine State. Now, our computer models are showing you that uh, strong consensus of that westerly turn that I was talking about, but what happens after that? Is that going to get lifted straight up to the north? Is that going to get up to the north and towards 
towards the east. Even the GFS still brings it way over there into central parts of the Gulf. Uh, that seems like an outlier, certainly at this time, and it looks a little bit more likely that this is going to be a northern Gulf or northeastern Gulf uh, storm. This is a look at the Euro model after that westerly track. It looks like it starts to pull it northward as we head into your Wednesday. So that gives you an idea that it's going to sit there and stall for a couple of days, meaning that west coast of Florida uh, likely to kind of take it on the chin to kick off our week. And then eventually that gets caught up with the jet and moves into the Carolinas, into the northeast as well. And finally, we can say goodbye. But boy, Dr. Knapp, this has been a long one. It's been kind of a strange and long track with Ada for sure. It has, and it's spent a lot of time over water, but it has also spent a lot of time over land. It's made another comeback, and here we are about to be affected by land again. So uh, you'll remember that this originated in the Caribbean, went over Central America, and then took this circuitous route up into uh, the Florida Straits, and now it's involved with an upper level low that's gonna slow it down and have it meander a little while longer. And it won't be until Friday p.m that it maybe is crossing northern Florida. You back that up, that is 13 days after it formed on Halloween. Now, this could be a record setter. Now, other d systems that have lasted 13 days in November include the 1932 hurricane, our only Cat 5, uh, and it had nearly uh, 3,100 deaths in Cuba. But from start to finish, that was 13 days, October 30th until mid-November. And we also had Gordon last for 13 days in mid-November. Doesn't that look a little bit familiar? But if Ada lasts until this next Saturday, as a tropical cyclone. That would be the longest Atlantic Basin November tropical cyclone on record, a life of two weeks. There you can see some of the sights of what Tropical Storm Ada has been bringing to Florida today. Welcome back to our special coverage tonight. I'm meteorologist Jackie Jarris. Our hurricane expert, Dr. Rick Nav, is going to join us in just a second. But I want to get you caught up with the nuts and bolts here of where Ada is and what it's doing right now. It's a tropical storm, pretty strong one, 65 mile per hour, maximum sustained winds. It's moving to the north and west right now, around 14 miles per hour. And it's about 65 miles, a little less than that now, uh, east of Marathon, Florida. And it has very large uh, center of circulation that may be making landfall in the overnight hours tonight across parts of the Keys. Expected to continue to move to the northwest through the overnight tonight and then more of a westerly direction and slowing down through Monday even into Tuesday and then getting pulled northward with the trough and work its way back towards uh, Florida, perhaps into the Big Bend area. So a pretty large cone down the line. It could become a hurricane at some point over those open waters into the 
the eastern Gulf, where they happen to be very warm. It will be fighting some wind shear, especially it gets closer towards the coast, so likely uh, to be a tropical storm if there's a second landfall. Again, we've got hurricane watches and hurricane warnings in effect. Uh, the warnings in the Keys from about Key Largo on southward, and then Miami over towards Naples. You're under the watch, but you're also under a tropical storm warning. And boy, this area's really been getting hit hard already tonight. We've had very persistent bands of thunderstorms that have been rolling through parts of Broward County and northern parts of Miami-Dade County here as well. Uh, heavy downpours, thunderstorms, and we're also seeing some signs of rotation off the coast here into Fort Lauderdale. So even a couple of uh, tornadoes will be a possibility. We've seen some wind gusts with those stronger storms, 50 to 60 miles per hour at times, and that's knocking out power to some folks. Uh, you can see in Palm Beach County there, we've got about 10,000 or so uh, at the most that are without power at this time. So know that spotty outages are going to be a possibility through the night tonight and into tomorrow as well. And we want to show you what the winds are going to be doing here as we head through the rest of the night tonight. And you can see those strong onshore pushes and those thunderstorms are going to continue. Now, as Ada moves off towards the west towards tomorrow morning, we'll start to see those winds begin to decrease, but they're not going to go away altogether. We're still talking about somewhere between 15 to as much as 30 mile per hour gusts with that persistent onshore flow. Boy, the beaches are really going to get beat up here with this going on for the next couple of days. Uh, we want to also talk a little bit about not just Ada, but some other areas that we have to watch into the Atlantic. So let's bring back in Dr. Nab. Dr. Nab, we're done. Say no more. <laughs> I, I think everybody who just listened to you is now going, seriously? He's going to talk about other systems? We have to. We, we do. We got to tell you like it is. And, you know, the hurricane season goes to the end of November for a reason, because historically we've had other systems form after this date, and we have two systems, an invest in the central subtropical Atlantic and another tropical wave that could develop in the Caribbean. Those are two areas that are hot spots for this time of year, and the system that is southwest of the Azores is not fully tropical, but it has a 40% chance of becoming a tropical or subtropical depression or storm as it moves eastward. So our friends way out in the Northeast Atlantic could be dealing with uh, this one. Again, this is the kind of system you can get happen uh, in November, a subtropical kind of thing that could take on tropical characteristics. Now, this area of the Caribbean is where we don't have a weather system in this area yet, but this is where something could develop over the next several days. What is going to cause that? There's another tropical wave. This is the visible imagery from all day during the day Sunday. You see this very gentle area of spin. This is another one of those tropical waves that left the west coast of Africa many days ago. South of Ada's trough, upper level high pressure starting to take shape. So watch the colors start to show up here as we go into the uh, middle of the week south of Hispaniola, south of Cuba. More and more colors, more and more spin showing up in the same area, Jackie, that Ada formed in uh, more than a week ago. We could have yet another one. All right. Uh, heads up on that, I guess. We'll be watching it. We know you will uh, for sure, Dr. Nab. Thanks so much. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about some of the impacts down the line of what we can expect for the East Coast later this week with Ada after it makes uh, likely another landfall, perhaps into the Florida Big Bend area. We're going to see that tropical moisture get caught up and move through the southeast into the mid-Atlantic and yes, even into parts of the northeast, but that's going to get absorbed uh, with a cold front that's across the nation's midsection right now with that high pressure that Dr. Nab was talking about before it sweeps through and eventually exits the eastern seaboard. But before that, uh, with that southeasterly flow, parts of Georgia, the Carolina is likely to get bombarded with some very heavy rainfall starting the middle of the week, especially continuing into your Thursday. There you can see getting lifted northward into your Friday. And then finally on Saturday, uh, it looks like that drier air will work its way in and eventually we're going to clear it out and say goodbye to Ada altogether. We're going to continue to track the tropics. There's one last look at the current position of Ada approaching the Keys. The center of tropical storm Ada is heading towards the Florida Keys overnight. Already here in South Florida, palm fronds down thousands without power because of wind gusts pushing 50 miles an hour. And we still have a lot of rain to come with flash flooding underway. We'll have the forecast to get an update on that track coming up.
Well, Tropical Storm Ada is bearing down on South Florida right now. Hurricane warnings are still up for the Florida Keys. Tropical Storm warnings north of there of Miami, Naples, northward for quite a ways. Uh, so we've got not only the short term issues to deal with, but Ada is going to be sticking around for a while, at least close to Florida and making a return trip. And we have the new full advisory in from the National Hurricane Center. Ada is still a tropical storm with maximum sustained winds at 65 miles per hour, and it is still a north loaded system. Uh, let me take a look at the uh, particulars here and hold on guys take the, take some take the cone full I'm going to bow out here and make sure that I've got the right graphics up here and we will show you the latest advisor so there's the way it looks on satellite again 65 mile an hour winds pressure's 993 based on recent aircraft and it's moving northwest at 14 miles an hour now if we I also want to show you how it looks like on radar uh, again look at how far north the rain goes all the way up into central Florida now on the south side clouds and radar returns are hard to come by because it's got a lot of dry air wrapped into it uh, and the the winds ne really near the center aren't all that strong. The stronger winds are over water a good distance to the northeast. So this is not your typical symmetric kind of tropical storm. Now, the watches and warnings haven't changed. We still have a hurricane warning for the Florida Keys, and you might be wondering well, why. Well, even though they're not explicitly forecasting it to reach hurricane strength uh, before getting to the Keys, there's a lot of uh, wiggle room and it's only going to be five or 10 miles an hour difference. So it's really important to realize that in this particular case, the difference between this hurricane warning in the Keys and this tropical storm warning for the Florida Peninsula are not a whole lot different because one way or the other, it's going to be very close to that tropical storm hurricane threshold. Okay. Uh, but look how far north that tropical storm warning still goes all the way up past Vero Beach up to the Cape Canaveral area and it's for inland areas as well and no changes to the warnings uh, for Cuba and the Bahamas as well. Here's the updated track and intensity forecast and again you know, we, it, it keeps it as a tropical storm but very close to hurricane that's why the hurricane warning stays up until it gets out here into the southeastern Gulf a little farther then they forecast it to become a little bit stronger as the shear weakens a bit and maybe it mixes out some of that dry air and it'll be over very warm water. Then shear will probably get to it again as the next trough picks it up. But it comes ashore maybe as a tropical storm in the northern part of Florida. So let me show you what the models are doing to help you understand why the Hurricane Center is forecasting what they are. So the colors are the low level spin. That's where Ada is focused. But you see in the upper level, see those traveling white lines? It's, it's got upper level low pressure around it too. And that's not typical for a, a tropical storm or a hurricane. But eventually, uh, you know, that upper level low pressure starts to, starts to weaken a bit. And the system is able to kind of shed some of that dry air and it'll be over very warm waters. But also, here's high pressure over the Atlantic. And here's a trough over the continental US. And Ada will be kind of stuck in between the two without a whole lot of strong steering currents until Wednesday, when this next trough starts to pick it up and move it northeastward. But you see these fast moving traveling white lines there? That's wind shear that will probably get it before it can get to northern Florida. And so that's why we're, they're not forecasting strengthening uh, as it makes its way toward northern Florida on Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, but still a tropical storm. And then what's left of it will move uh, over the southeastern US and the mid Atlantic, and that will bring some weather uh, to that part of the country. So here it is now. See all that uh, dry air getting wrapped in? And it's got a big upper level low associated with it. You know, that's why uh, you know, it's having trouble strengthening right now. But still, this is still a pretty healthy system. This is why it looked on visible before sunset. And now look at this, this nasty band on the north side. This isn't as strong, but this is the stronger winds moving into Broward County where they still have a flash flood warning. Well, our meteorologist, Mike Seidel, is in Miami Beach, and he's watching the storm pushing rain and wind ashore in southern Florida. Hey, Dr. Dab, it's been a very windy night here in South Beach, but not very wet. We've been in between the squalls rotating around Ada. Ada is going to be crossing the Keys overnight, and we will get more heavy rain and wind gusts potentially to 50 miles an hour right here in South Beach. The issues have been just north of us in Broward County. Take a look at the flash flooding, the urban flooding, just about 30 to 45 minutes north of here. There's been training of thunderstorms and heavy rain. This outer band around Ada coming into Broward County and 
uh, parts of southern Palm Beach County. Local rainfall amounts 8 to 10 inches. The airport last check has had about 7 inches, and now they've had over 85 inches of rain for the year. 14 of that fell last month. So the ground is saturated, and with these wind gusts, we could have some palm trees come down. Already, right here in South Beach, we've had some palm fronds come down. And what happens, these can come down, take out a power line, and cause power outages. And power outages now in the thousands across uh, South Florida, and they will continue to mount overnight. And with these gusty winds, uh, Florida Power and Light will not be able to get their bucket trucks up. As for tomorrow, Ada pulls into the Gulf of Mexico, but we're still going to have that flow from the southeast and south, so we'll probably have some training and some trailing rain bands. That's why the Weather Service here has hoisted that flood watch right on through Tuesday evening. So winds and a lot of rain as Ada heads into the Gulf of Mexico tonight and into Monday afternoon. Dr. Nab. Hey, thanks, Mike. Uh, and as it makes its way into the Gulf of Mexico, it's going to be crossing over the Keys. Here's a live look at the southernmost point in Key West. Now they're on the western side of Ada right now, not the strongest side and not where the strongest winds are yet. That will be changing as this moves into the Gulf of Mexico. Eventually Key West will get on the nastier side of this system. For now, we have you know, some heavy rain on the northeastern side, uh, not really an eye wall per se with this tropical storm, but uh, the closest you can get to it over the, the northern keys. Uh, but the really strong stuff and the heaviest rain where all that lightning is, is that band that's about 7,500 miles off to the north. And you know, you've got some gusty winds in the Keys in extreme southern Florida, you know, gusting over 30, 40 miles an hour down in that area, but the stronger gusts, 40 to 50 are up farther north into Broward and Palm Beach County. Look at how strong it's gusting even way inland. So again, a very north loaded system and this nasty band that has been persistent uh, has caused the Weather Service to issue and extend this flash flood warning to 1145 this evening. A considerable risk. You've got to stay off the roads. A lot of water covered roads, water rescues, and we've had reports uh, you know, of um, a lot of water in different parts of this flash flood warning area and because of the volume of water. Now locally we've gotten up close to a foot of rain, but many parts of the area have gotten over a half a foot and there's more rain coming uh, from offshore. And look at these uh, reports, Hollywood, Florida, over 10 inches. This was a little while ago. They're adding to this sunrise over six and a half. Fort Lauderdale itself, almost six. Weston, almost six. Miramar, more than seven. And when you consider how much more rain we're going to get over the next few days, this water problem is going to really ramp up and it's going to expand because this is going to be a slow mover and Florida is going to remain on the wet side of this system for days to come. So we got a flash flood watch that's in effect for now from just north of uh, Lake Okeechobee, kind of Vero and Fort Myers southward. That's through Tuesday evening, but this is going to have to get extended, I'm sure, and expanded northward. This is the area where we could have some more flash flooding into tomorrow morning. The highest risk there in the Boca down to Hallandale area. But a lot of you could start to get more and more flooding problems even over on the west coast of Florida. And this problem will continue tomorrow, tomorrow night into Tuesday morning. Look at the future radar and keep in mind too, we do have a storm surge issue in the Florida Keys. Onshore flow from the Gulf side before the center moves by, from the Atlantic side after it moves by, and then that continues to put the Florida Peninsula on the wet side of this system. My goodness, and Jackie, this is just the next, you know, day or so yeah. and then we got to deal with how long this is going to be hanging out near Florida. Yeah, not it's going to be a long week for sure. It's already been a long week, right? And we're going into yeah, another really. uh, long week ahead of us, uh, Dr. Nab. We're looking live right now in Miami. Of course, Miami, you've been feeling these impacts all day long. We've had the gusty winds. We've had the heavy rain from time to time. Uh, we've got the onshore flow, beach erosion, all the impacts here from Ada and then Naples. So you're on the other side of the Florida Peninsula and I think I think tomorrow is going to be a little bit more your turn. Sure, you've seen some gusty winds, but look at that. We got people walking out of the pier here uh, tonight. So that tells you, you know, that it's not quite as bad on the West Coast just yet, but that will change with time. So that main line that Dr. Neb was just talking about that's been bringing in the copious amounts of rainfall around Fort Lauderdale, that line also has some kinks within it offshore. And we are watching that area potentially for water spouts, which then make their 
their way onto land and could rotate and produce tornadoes. So there is a tropical tornado threat here tonight. Um, that's going to be from about Port St. Lucie on southward. And I think it is going to be most likely right between Fort Lauderdale and Miami as that line continues to push on in. So our Torcons tonight are a two and a three. So that's on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the highest threat, uh, one being the lowest threat. So the number is not super high and we don't have any watches in effect, but when there's a number, there's a risk. And as we head into tomorrow, as Ada pushes in that westerly direction, the focus of that tornado risk is going to be more under the southwestern parts of the Florida coast. It includes the Keys, though. The Keys, you're still going to be in this, as well as Naples over towards Everglades City and Miami. We still couldn't rule it out. So Miami, uh, you saw that live shot there. You could see the gusty winds. The strongest winds we think for you, Miami, are going to be tonight through the overnight and then even into the day tomorrow. You could get some of the stronger wind gusts that could reach 50 miles per hour. We're expecting maybe as much as three to eight inches of additional rainfall, depending on where these heaviest bands end up setting up. So you've seen it north of you through a lot of the day today here, Miami, but our models have been pretty persistent, showing overnight to early tomorrow morning, likely getting some of those strong thunderstorms before we head into the afternoon hours uh, into your Monday and into Monday night and you can see it more focused on the southwest but still into the key so when a storm system like this slows down uh, it can actually just continue to bring in that onshore flow and heavy downpours and just keep adding it up adding it up day after day so the ground here already very saturated and when we're talking about the potential for two to maybe as much as five inches of additional rainfall we can't rule out locally heavier amounts out of of all this. Uh, unfortunately, that means that flood risk is going to be lasting uh, most likely for days to come. So not good news here. Uh, a lot of flood prone areas, low lying areas here into southern parts of Florida. And just a quick look at Fort Lauderdale for the timing for you. Uh, the 30 mile per hour plus gusts, they're already there. The 50 start tonight and continue into tomorrow. An additional two to three inches of rainfall that might be underdone a little bit. I wouldn't rule out uh, heavier amounts from there for sure. So Dr. Nab, it looks like we're going to be having a landfall, uh, the first one in Florida so far this season, and then we'll likely have a second landfall perhaps in Florida down the line as well. Yeah, I think uh, the chances of that are increasing quite a bit because this is going to go through the Florida Keys and then it's not going to move much when it takes up residence over the southeastern Gulf of Mexico and probably Hurricane Center forecast is right, become a hurricane. So Tampa, you got to start watching this because as it moves slowly over the southeastern Gulf, probably ends up moving farther north. Rain, wind, maybe some storm surge, or at least some coastal flooding impacts in Tampa are a distinct possibility. Uh, you know, the, the center may be coming uh, near you, perhaps on the Thursday time frame. But again, steering currents aren't going to be very strong down in here on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So uh, a lot of things could change. So Tampa, you're going to want to stay close to us for the next several days to, uh, as we zone in on what could happen. Uh, this part of the forecast is where it is forecast to become a hurricane. But then after that, uh, even though it'll be over warm waters, the wind shear should increase. So it'll get steered and sheared as it moves northward. Now, another thing, Tampa, you got to start thinking about is at least the possibility of a storm surge issue or at least some coastal flooding issues. They're already up. Storm surge watches for the southwestern coast of Florida, including up into Naples. Storm surge warning for the Keys. And right now, we could have two to four feet above normally dry ground. But that problem could extend up the west coast after this gets into the Gulf of Mexico. Watch this. As it gets into the Gulf, it gets between high pressure here and a trough here. S weak steering currents, weak wind shear into Tuesday. But then when the trough picks it up, it'll probably steer it and shear it. So, Jackie, hopefully that keeps it from staying a hurricane all the way to the uh, northwestern coast of Florida, mm -hmm. but still a big tropical storm can have wind and water problems at the coast and inland. Yeah, and that wind field so spread out too, uh, Dr. Nab. And the rainfall is going to get spread far inland too. So a lot of this tropical moisture is going to get caught up with that trough and that cold front that Dr. Nab was talking about and just squeeze out a ton of rain into the southeast across the Carolinas. Uh, we could see some flood issues into the higher elevations across the Appalachians. And the mid-Atlantic is going to be getting in on this rain. So that 
that tropical moisture is going to get fed into the Carolinas well ahead of that cold front. So keep that in mind and well ahead of where the core of Ada may be working its way on shore. We've got high pressure off the coast helping to draw and tap into some of that moisture so we could really squeeze out some pretty heavy amounts here. This is all going to get going already as we head into your Tuesday across parts of Alabama into Georgia. Wednesday, this really begins to spread and focus in on the Carolinas as well as in the parts of Virginia, Washington, D.C. This is the middle to the end of the week for you here as well. And then Friday, notice we start to dry things out west towards the east. Still coastal areas likely to get in on some of the heaviest of downpours with still that flood threat as we head into your Saturday. I think most of us can take a big sigh of relief so at least the weekend uh, looks a little bit better ahead of us. And there you can see the showers and thunderstorms and the active weather for Atlanta. Expect one to three inches of rainfall. season doesn't stop for a pandemic and neither do we get the information you need to stay safe every day right here on the weather channel and that goes for all of us uh, all the way through the end of hurricane season uh, it's an active november and even after ada there could be some more development we'll talk about that later in the hour now let's take a look at the latest on ada itself 65 mile an hour tropical storm getting closer and closer its center to the florida keys and you're still under hurricane warning in the Florida Keys, although it might not make it to hurricane, but there's not a whole lot of difference between a 60 or 65 or 70 mile an hour tropical storm and a 75 mile an hour hurricane. The impacts will be very similar uh, wind wise in that hurricane warning area as they are in the tropical storm warning area, down trees, power lines and heavy rain. We'll get to that in a little bit. Here's the latest update on the forecast from the Hurricane Center issued within the last uh, half hour. It's going to be moving slowly out into the Gulf of Mexico. Could even stall and loop for a little bit into Tuesday, even Wednesday. Then Wednesday into Thursday, making its way back toward Florida, keeping the peninsula on the wet, windy side for days and days to come. You'll have better times than others, uh, some breaks here and there, but it'll be a rough week uh, up and down the peninsula. Now, here's the center of circulation, but it is a very north loaded system. You got rain all the way up into central Florida. Got two areas of heavy rain and strong winds just north of the center and then a little bit farther north of the center up into Broward and Palm Beach counties. Now, in Dade County, Miami-Dade County, and in the Keys, you know, Homestead, you're gusting to 40, Marathon to 37, even Miami gusting to 33. And on that north side, it's not a bonafide eyewall, but that northern band is where some strong winds and heavy rain are occurring. So now there's a new flash flood warning down in the Homestead, Cutler Bay, and Palmetto Bay areas. That goes until 2 a.m. Eastern time, just like your friends farther north up in Broward and Palm Beach County. You got to stay off the roads, folks. Uh, this will ramp up and at night it is really hard to tell how high water might be covering roads and you end up driving into a canal or something. Just so many uh, problems. Now look at this nasty band through Broward and southern Palm Beach counties gusting to 40 at Boca, 47 at West Palm and the rain just keeps coming down. There's still more offshore. So not just because of what is about to fall from this point forward, but what has fallen so far. We got a flash flood warning till 1145 uh, for essentially all of, in, of, of uh, occupied inhabited Broward County, even uh, up into southern Palm Beach County, up in the Boca area. And you've had over half a foot of rain in many parts of this area. This has been the focus all day. And 
it's going to continue, right? Uh, this north loaded system, after it gets out in here in the Gulf of Mexico, that's going to put us uh, in continued rainy and windy weather, Jackie. So even though it's moving away from Florida, that's temporary. And we move back toward Florida, got a rough several days ahead. Yeah, and we say on the right-hand side of that storm that whole time. So that means we're going to continue to have those impacts. Um, one of those impacts uh, will likely be a few tropical tornadoes, and that's one of the risks uh, that we're watching out here for tonight. So this main persistent band that Dr. Nab was just talking about that's bringing all that flash flooding also has a few areas of rotation in those storms that are offshore. And I'm not seeing much in that second band that's moving in south of Miami right now, uh, but that's certainly another area that we're going to have to watch uh, over the next few hours. Uh, rotation was actually looking pretty good about an hour or so ago, and now we're just seeing maybe a couple of kinks here or there uh, within that line, but that would bring it in just to the south of the Boca area. So no tornado watches have been issued for this, but just a heads up that we could get some water spouts that eventually work their way onto the coast, uh, which then become tornadoes. They can and do, uh, do damage. So as you're going to bed tonight, make sure you've got those alerts set properly on your phone or you've got a NOAA weather radio that will wake you up uh, in case you need to get to your safe place. Uh, as we head into tonight, it's really that uh, eastern coast that we're going to be most concerned about. We've got torcons of twos and threes here. The higher the number, the higher the risk. So it's there. It's not zero. Um, and as we head into tomorrow, we think that uh, focus will shift to southwestern parts of the state as Ada pushes more in a westerly direction. So you're going to look a little bit better, uh, say, up in a West Palm and areas north of there. Key West, let's talk about your timing and your impact. Packs. We're going to be seeing those 60 plus mile per hour wind gusts tonight. In fact, the worst of the conditions in terms of the wind impacts are really pushing across the keys as we speak, but they're going to continue with some of those stronger gusts uh, through Monday afternoon. Rainfall amounts an additional two to three inches can be expected in West Palm. We'll see those strongest wind gusts tonight into tomorrow morning, perhaps another one to two inches, depending if we see any wavering uh, with some of those bands. So Dr. Nab, um, South Florida really taking it on the here for tonight, but we've got to watch out for impacts in Central Florida and Northern Florida down the line. Yeah, and along the way, continuing to some degree in Southern Florida as well. So what's up with this funny looking cone? Why does it go out into the Southern Gulf and sit there, maybe become a hurricane and then go northward and maybe go back to tropical storm? This is a lot of changes that we got to keep track of. Well, the atmosphere is complicated in this scenario. It's got an upper level low overhead and Ada has gotten kind of stuck inside that. And then there's high pressure off to the east and another trough coming in from the west. And it gets out into the Gulf, warm waters, weak wind shear for a little while. But then that high to the east and that approaching trough steers it northward and that wind shear starts to increase again. See those fast moving white lines? That'll probably shear it before it gets to uh, northern Florida late in the week. So maybe it won't come ashore as a hurricane, but a strong tropical storm perhaps. And then what's left of it goes uh, northeastward. But in the meantime, it'll stay north loaded. Watch these wind gusts hamper Florida all week long and the west coast really uh, gets stronger around Tampa. Welcome back to a very windy South Beach here in South Florida. I'm meteorologist Mike Seidel. Our continuing coverage here on the Weather Channel of Tropical Storm Ada heading across the Florida Keys tonight. And ahead of it, we've had plenty of wind, wind gusts over 50 miles an hour, and torrential rainfall. Not so much here. We've had about three inches of rain so far in Miami, but up the coast, look at these pictures out of Broward County in Fort Lauderdale. We had at least one water rescue. Water as deep as waist deep in some of these areas, eight to 10 inches of rain. The fire hose of this outer band has been arcing right into those areas for hours now, and it's going to be a continuing problem into early Monday morning. Keep in mind, aid is going to cross the Keys and go into the Gulf of Mexico, so the brunt of the rain will move out, but we're going to have those trailing rain bands, and those will bring additional showers and thunderstorms even into Tuesday, and that's why the flood watch is up until then. These winds knocking down some palm fronds like this one. This will come down and knock down a power line and knock out power and thousands of power outages. They continue to mount here in South Florida from the wind from Ada. Once Ada moves on through, it goes into the Gulf of Mexico. And by the middle of the week, we'll start to dry out here in Miami and Fort Lauderdale. Dr. Nab. Yeah, Mike, when uh, Ada is all said and done, it could make 
more than one landfall in the state of Florida, starting with the Florida Keys in, uh, in a few hours, and then maybe, as I'll show you in a little bit, farther north up the west coast of Florida. 65 mile an hour tropical storm moving northwestward, the center of circulation very near the Keys, but the center of action has been on the peninsula, especially up in Broward County, where they've had the heaviest rainfall. This nasty band has persistently been plaguing them with the heavy rains, causing the flooding and the strong winds. We've also got uh, the northern side closer to the center that has perked up uh, in Miami-Dade County. So let's take a look at some of the recent wind reports down there. A homestead gusting to 40 miles an hour. Marathon down in here on the western side getting a north wind uh, gusting to 37 miles an hour. And uh, Miami itself uh, gusting to 33. And on that northern side, that band going over homestead has dumped a lot of heavy rainfall. It's coming down just a little too quickly. Flash flood warning till 2 a.m. Please stay off the roads. If you see what's been happening to your friends up in Broward County with water rescues and water getting into some homes, uh, it's just a really bad night to be out on the roads. And when it's that windy, it makes it even more dangerous. Trees can come down on your car or they can come down onto a road and you drive into that fallen tree. A couple of recent wind reports so, southwest of Miami and Country Walk gusted to 52 with a quick moving shower. Lake Worth just near Palm Beach gusted recently to 54 miles an hour. So this is a pretty uh, potent set of tropical storm uh, hazards that are, we're dealing with. The winds that could cause some spotty power outages and then the heavy rainfall. Look at Broward County. Uh, Gusting to 30 at Fort Lauderdale, 40 at Boca, 47 at West Palm. And look at these inland gusts, 33 to 40 miles an hour up near uh, Lake Okeechobee and getting toward uh, southwest Florida across Alligator Alley, a, a road you don't want to be on tonight because of the winds and the rain. Our flash flood warning from Boca down through all of Metro Broward uh, is in effect till 1145 local time. I, I got to believe that some kind of warning is going to have to be extended because the rain keeps coming down and there's more offshore. So the flood problems are going to continue to mount up more than half a foot of rain pushing a foot in some places in Broward County. And we have, unfortunately, a slow moving system that's not going to be all that far away from Florida for days to come. So we've got a flash flood watch that's in effect from Vero and Fort Myers southward. That's just through Tuesday evening. And the big problem will persist into tomorrow morning, the metro parts of southeastern Florida through Tuesday morning. And then, Jackie, after that, we have more rain that will continue to plague Florida on the eastern side of the system all week long. All week long, and it gets into parts of the southeast, eventually into the mid-Atlantic. So we've got a long way to go here still uh, with Tropical Storm Ada. Ada will likely bring some flooding rains across the deep south into the Carolinas. And the rainfall forecast for the next five days bringing three to five inches in some areas. And I wouldn't rule out some locally heavier amounts. This part of the country does not need any rainfall. We're waiting for this cold front out here in the nation's midsection to sweep on through and help kick Ada out of here uh, for good. But unfortunately, high pressure is kind of blocking it up, meaning that that front is going to take its sweet time tracking off towards the east. And that's part of why Ada is going to be slowing down and stalling out. But Dr. Nab mentioned that Florida is going to be into that onshore flow well, so is parts of Georgia and into the Carolinas, especially as we head towards the middle of the week. That tropical moisture is going to get caught up with that flow from the high pressure system, that Bermuda high, plus Ada working its way through. So look at how far north that tropical moisture extends into your Thursday, into your Friday, and then eventually we'll watch for that drier air to work its way in late Friday and into your Saturday from west towards the east. So hang in there. Last look here at the cone of Ada. We've got more right after this. Tropical storm Ada is getting closer and closer to perhaps making landfall unless it goes in between a couple islands. Kind of hard to do with all those islands in the Keys. But making landfall in the Florida Keys here within the next few hours. It's a 65 mile an hour tropical storm moving northwestward, but it is so north loaded that a lot of you on the peninsula are getting some really bad and dangerous, even life threatening weather mainly because of the heavy rainfall and flooding in places like Broward County. Now, let's take a look at what the warnings are. This is, again, an update from the latest Hurricane Center advisory within the last hour. No changes to the tropical storm warnings. And look how far north they go on the peninsula, past Lake Okeechobee, all the way up to Cape Canaveral. And you can expect these to be extended northward as the week goes on, because we're going to be dealing with this for a while. Flash flood watch. 
is in effect till Tuesday evening. You're thinking, well, this is moving across Florida. Isn't that going to end the threat? No, you'll see in the cone a little bit how uh, this is going to hang out near Florida for a while. So we're going to have flooding issues for some time to come. The storm surge warning is still in effect for the Florida Keys because uh, with the onshore flow on the east side and the onshore flow from the Gulf of Mexico on the west side, we've got saltwater flooding two, three, four feet above normally dry ground, and that problem could extend up the uh, southwest portion of the peninsula, and this could be extended farther north as the week goes on. Here is that cone. As wild and wacky as this is, it is going to essentially keep all of Florida, especially the peninsula, in some very wet and windy weather for days and days to come. Now, the farther it gets away here over the next couple of days, the less the winds and rain will get here in southern Florida, but it's not going to shut off the, the, the water hose here of the heavy rainfall, and you're going to be on the windier side of this lopsided system, maybe as it becomes a hurricane Tuesday and Wednesday, and then comes back toward the peninsula, maybe as a strong tropical storm in the Wednesday to Thursday time frame. And because it's going to remain so north loaded, a lot of you are going to stay in very windy conditions. So this is, you know, a day from now. The center circulation getting out in here toward western Cuba. But look how gusty the winds are for a long distance north of the center tomorrow night. Then you look at Tuesday night. It's not moving much. Again, you're going to stay very gusty here, uh, even on the east coast, but increasingly so on the west coast as the system probably strengthens. And then Wednesday night, maybe it's a hurricane or strong tropical storm, and the west coast of Florida really will be getting windier with increasing chances of heavy rainfall, maybe some coastal flooding or storm surge. But then watch how on Thursday is perhaps it's crossing northern Florida, but Georgia, coastlines of South and North Carolina will be on the windier side of this system. So, Jackie, it's going to be a long week for the state of Florida, but it's mm -hmm. the effects aren't going to stop there once the system moves northeastward into the southeast and mid-Atlantic. Yeah, this is going to affect uh, millions of Americans from Atlanta to Charlotte up towards Washington, D.C. eventually. So kind of a weird kind of a track here that we have going on with Ada. High pressure blocking it from an escape route to the north right now. So it's continuing in that westerly direction and gets kind of caught between the air flows uh, that slows it down and stalls it out. So we're waiting for that dip in the jet stream eventually to pull it back up towards the north and we think that will finally happen uh, by the middle of the week and we'll see that northerly pull and then eventually get uh, drawn up towards the north and to the east and begin to accelerate in forward speed as it does so. But as Dr. Nab was mentioning, you know, this stays into the eastern Gulf for several days and because Florida remains on the right hand side of this, remember this flows in counterclockwise, that means it's going to continue to feed in all that tropical moisture, keeping you in the active weather, keeping you with the the wet weather and onshore flow that's going to continue to cause all kinds of beach erosion problems, uh, not just into Florida, but on up the line into Georgia as well as into the Carolinas. Uh, now, notice the strong consistency and the forecast tracks of, of the spaghetti models here in that westerly direction over the next 48 hours or so. But all of a sudden with that northerly pull, we get all kinds of crazy stuff going on with the model. Some of it looping it around in here, some of it bringing up towards the Big Bend. Notice even the GFS brings it back towards the west, a little bit closer towards the northern Gulf. So these are more likely outliers, but they certainly bear watching. And notice there's more of a trend, and we'll have to wait and see as that trend is your friend uh, that brings it up towards the north and eventually off towards the north and towards the east. So it will be fighting some wind shear as it does so and continues on that northerly track. So hopefully this keeps this down to a tropical storm as it gets closer towards land. But Dr. Nav, um, this is going to be a long week and such an interesting track. This one has had lots of twists and turns, I think, really since the very beginning. Yeah, and when you consider that what you just showed uh, talks about how we could be dealing with Ada into the weekend, and back it up, it formed back on Halloween, a two week long <laughs> system. Yeah. And that doesn't happen in November very often. So let's take a look at some other systems that uh, Ada could be uh, uh, you know, breaking the record for. And, and part of the reason why it has lasted so long going you know, through the Caribbean over Central America and then up into here uh, is because there haven't been really strong 
high pressure systems to, to steer it along. It's gotten involved with this low pressure system. That's what's going to cause it to kind of stay uh, over the Gulf of Mexico. And eventually that whole system gets picked up by the next trough. But this could be two weeks after it first formed. If it lasts that 14 day period, that would be the longest lived Atlantic Basin November tropical cyclone in history. What records does it have to break? Well, the 13 days of the, the first 13 days in November, the Cuba hurricane in 1932 occupied, and it was over the Western Caribbean and went northeastward. More than 3,100 deaths in Cuba, significant damage in many countries. That formed on October 30th and was a tropical cyclone all the way into mid-November, a, a two-week period. Gordon was also uh, in mid-November of 1994, something that lasted for 13 days. Doesn't this look a bit familiar? So November apparently is really good at occasionally generating some really long-lived looping systems. But again, if Ada lasts until this Saturday's tropical cyclone, that'll set the record for the longest lived November system at two weeks in duration. At the home Some of the scenes there from Tropical Storm Ada packing some wild winds and some uh, rough waves out there in Florida. And Ada getting really close to making landfall now near Isla Morada in the Florida Keys. Uh, this is packing winds at 65 miles per hour. That's the latest from the advisory from the National Hurricane Center. Pressure at 993 millibars. It's moving to the northwest right now at 14 miles per hour, but it's expected to slow down uh, here as we head towards tomorrow. It's about 40 miles. Uh, it says east of Marathon, but it does look like a very large center uh, is working its way right across the Keys as we speak. Now it is expected to turn more westerly tonight into tomorrow and really slow down as it does so, eventually working its way northward, uh, likely sometime late on Tuesday as a trough pulls it up uh, closer towards the Gulf Coast there as we move towards the Big Bend area with potential landfall late on Thursday. Thursday. So kind of a crazy track that we have with Ada. All kinds of impacts are going to stick with much of Florida through the better part of the week. Unfortunately, hurricane watches and warnings are posted right now, and the worst of those conditions are bearing down on the Keys as we speak in terms of the winds. But we've had incredible rainfall and gusty conditions, especially around Fort Lauderdale and just south of West Palm Beach, where tropical storm warnings remain in effect here. And that's the case for Fort Myers as well as into the Naples area as well. Here's a look at some of the latest wind speeds and gusts. Notice 33 mile per hour gusts in Miami right now. 47 here into West Palm. We've got that persistent onshore flow, which is bringing in some of those heavier bands of rainfall. And that's why we've had so much flooding uh, right into that Lauder Hill area. Uh, this is the latest power outage tracker, but we were just looking uh, on poweroutage.us and about 50,000 people now in the state of Florida are in the dark here for tonight with no lights uh, able to come on. 
sun. So more spotty power outages can be expected in the hours ahead for tonight. And we'll watch for gusty winds to persist through tomorrow. Uh, that onshore flow is not going away, unfortunately, anytime soon. So expect impact still over the next couple of days. That's the latest with Ada. Dr. Nab, as we know, hurricane season goes through the rest of November. And unfortunately, we've got two other areas we have to keep our eye on now. Yeah, we're using the word another a lot tonight. You're going to have a landfall in the Keys soon. We're going to have another landfall in Florida probably later in the week. We got Ada now, and we're going to have another one or two systems to watch that could become our next depressions or storms. One out in the uh, central to eastern subtropical Atlantic, that's Invest 97L, an area of non-tropical low pressure right now that could take on more tropical characteristics. And then we got to watch the Caribbean again because another tropical wave there's that word again. Another tropical wave that left Africa many days ago is making its way into the Caribbean that could develop in about the same place Ada did. First, our invest, this non-tropical area low pressure. Here's the Azores out in here. Uh, as it moves eastward, it's got a four out of 10 shot, according to the Hurricane Center, becoming a tropical or subtropical depression or storm. So this could eventually, well, probably will be land threatening, even if it doesn't become fully tropical or partially tropical. It's just a matter of whether or not it acquires enough of those characteristics Characteristics to get uh, designated by the Hurricane Center. But out in the East Atlantic, uh, some folks are going to experience the effects of that system. Now, in the Caribbean, got a three out of 10 shot over the next five days of getting a tropical depression or storm. What's going on down there? Well, if we flip back uh, to the visible imagery during the day, you can see this gentle, relatively gentle area of turning and spin coming into the Eastern Caribbean. That's another tropical wave crossed all the way uh, through the tropical Atlantic and has made it now into the Caribbean where we've got upper level high pressure south of our low. Uh, that is going to provide the conditions that could allow for another area of spin to take shape. Watch this area. The same neck of the woods that Ada developed in uh, before Halloween. This is the same area in which you see all those colors forming where that area of low pressure could form from that tropical wave. And when we get to about a week from now, Jackie, we could be dealing with another system. And then here we are with Ada almost about to make landfall in the Keys. All right, boy, is it just me or does it seem like Halloween was so long ago? Already? It does, I doesn't it? Have. That was uh, last month. Yeah, It was, and we've got a whole other week to go here yet uh, with Ada. So this is going to get wrapped up into uh, the flow of uh, another trough that's coming in from the west. And we're going to get that tropical moisture, not just across parts of Florida, but this is going to get swept up across the southeast into the Carolinas and eventually uh, even into the mid-Atlantic. So high pressure is kind of blocking that all up right now and that means that cold front is not just going to take a quick day or two to get across uh, the eastern seaboard it's going to take all week eventually to work its way off towards the coast. So look at that onshore flow here into South Carolina. We could be talking about some really heavy rain and a flood threat here, not to mention some rough waves, beach erosion, as well as rips. And then eventually we'll watch that sweep out of there by Saturday. But notice still we've got some moisture uh, lingering across central and southern parts of Florida while everybody else eventually begins to clear on out. So watch for that moisture to lift into the deep south here by your Tuesday. We'll watch that move through the Carolinas with the heavier downpours on Wednesday. This will last into your Thursday and Friday. Introducing Tostitos. The center of Tropical Storm Ada is heading towards the Florida Keys overnight. Already here in South Florida, palm fronds down thousands without power because of wind gusts pushing 50 miles an hour. And we still have a lot of rain to come with flash flooding underway. We'll have the forecast to get an update on that track coming up. Well, Tropical Storm Ada bearing down on South Florida right now. Uh, landfall in the Keys is uh, just maybe moments away. Hurricane warnings up there and from Miami to Naples, the rest of South Florida under tropical storm warning. And then it's going to be moving in the Gulf of Mexico and hanging out near Florida for days to come. My goodness, what a long duration event uh, we are about to have. Uh, and it's already started, but it's just really going to be a long, long week uh, in some folks in central and northern Florida where it hasn't quite started yet. 
uh, it will eventually make it your way. Now, as of the 10, five miles an hour moving northwest at 14, and it continues to be a very lopsided system, very north loaded. Uh, you got this main nasty band that has plagued Broward and Palm Beach counties for hours. And then you've got an increasingly nasty uh, area just north of the center. Now, this is what looks like an eye. And for a strong tropical storm, I'd say it's a ragged eye like uh, you know, central area, would, not quite an eye, certainly looks more impressive on the radar. This way, you look at it on satellite, you're not going to see an eye. But uh, that band on the northern side has gotten a lot more, uh, you know, potent and solid. Now, here are the Florida Keys and, you know, in between Isla Morada and Marathon, that's where the center uh, is very, very close to making landfall. And depending upon what it does after that is a clip uh, the mainland southwest Florida area. Does it come back this way and uh, maybe make landfall or clip uh, Key West? You know, there's lots of things it could do along the way, but this will be the first of what's at least two Florida landfalls because eventually it's going to go up toward uh, northwest Florida, the Big Bend area. The Homestead area gusting to 47 miles an hour. Key West not getting into the convection yet. So on that weaker, drier west side, recent gust to 25 marathon, uh, gusting to 36 as you catch the western side of, of that. And Fort Lauderdale gusting to 37. Now we have flash flood warnings that are still up in the Homestead Palmetto Bay area. Your warning goes till two o'clock. In the morning, please stay off the roads. Water covered roads, very strong winds, very, very dangerous. Some recent wind reports, uh, Pompano Beach uh, recently gusted to 56 miles an hour. Fort Lauderdale, a mesonet station gusted to 66 miles per hour. So when those bands come through, they mix down that energy from higher up. Uh, you get the heavy rain, maybe even some lightning, but you get those really strong wind gusts. Broward and Southern Palm Beach, still where the heaviest rain is. West Palm, Boca, Fort Lauderdale, all gusting in the 40 to 45 mile an hour range. Even some strong gusty winds well inland south and southwest of Lake Okeechobee. So here's our flash flood warning that's still in effect in the Boca area. Essentially all of Metro Broward until 1145 local time. And there is still some more thunderstorms in that band lingering just offshore. So again, adding to the really, really dangerous, even life threatening flooding that we've had in Broward and Palm Beach with over half a foot, nearly a foot of rain in some spots, there's more offshore. So uh, that's the highest risk area overnight, but we could have some localized flash flooding anywhere uh, from Vero southward uh, tonight into tomorrow morning. Now, because this is gonna be slowing down as it takes up residence in the southeastern Gulf, and maybe over those warm waters as the wind shear uh, weakens, uh, we could get this become a hurricane before it weakens again later, uh, but not a whole lot. Comes ashore in northern Florida, perhaps, as a strong tropical storm. But that all means for the Florida Peninsula, it's going to be windy and rainy for days to come, including in South Florida, even after the center uh, passes by your area. So a flash flood watch is currently in effect for all of South Florida, from Vero over to Port Charlotte uh, southward, and that goes through Tuesday evening and that could be extended because it'll still be in the eastern Gulf into Wednesday, even Thursday, but this will likely get extended uh, farther to the north. So the flooding has been the biggest problem in South Florida, especially in Palm Beach and Broward County. But we've had some issues in Miami-Dade County and our Weather Channel meteorologist Mike Seidel is in Miami Beach watching the storm pushing rain and wind ashore there. Hey, Dr. Dab, it's been a very windy night here in South Beach, but not very wet. We've been in between the squalls rotating around Ada. Ada is going to be crossing the Keys overnight, and we will get more heavy rain and wind gusts potentially to 50 miles an hour right here in South Beach. The issues have been just north of us in Broward County. Take a look at the flash flooding, the urban flooding, just about 30 to 45 minutes north of here. There's been training of thunderstorms and heavy rain. This outer band around Ada coming into Broward County and uh, parts of Southern Palm Beach County. Local rainfall amounts eight to 10 inches. The airport last check has had about seven inches and now they've had over 85 inches of rain for the year. 14 of that fell last month. So the ground is saturated and with these wind gusts, we could have some palm trees come down. Already right here in South Beach, we've had some palm fronds come down. And what happens, these can come down, take out a power line and cause power outages. And power outages now in the thousands across uh, South Florida and they will continue to mount overnight. And with these gusty winds, 
uh, Florida Power and Light will not be able to get their bucket trucks up. As for tomorrow, Ada pulls into the Gulf of Mexico, but we're still going to have that flow from the southeast and south, so we'll probably have some training and some trailing rain bands. That's why the Weather Service here has hoisted that flood watch right on through Tuesday evening. So winds and a lot of rain as Ada heads into the Gulf of Mexico tonight and into Monday afternoon. Dr. Nab. All right, thanks, Micah. Let's take a look at the southernmost point in Key West. Now, again, they're on the western side of Ada right now where it's not as windy and not as rainy. The north and northeast loaded system uh, makes it uh, not quite as treacherous to stand where those gentlemen are right now. That will be changing because this will be moving westward and uh, the Key West will, before too much longer, by tomorrow morning, uh, be getting on the stronger eastern side as it moves generally westward. Now, it doesn't look like it's going to make it to Hurricane before crossing the Keys here shortly uh, in Key West, but shortly thereafter, it looks like it will strengthen as the wind shear weakens, maybe mixes out some of that dry air. Hurricane Center is still forecasting to become a hurricane by the time we get into Tuesday, and it's not moving very much out there, and then moves northeastward. Now, how strong it is and how well put together it is when it gets up into here by the time Thursday rolls around, models don't agree on that, but I have a hard time believing it's just going to go away. So it's a good chance we're going to have at least a a pretty windy, rainy, low pressure system of some kind coming ashore uh, in, in the northern part of Florida. But that leaves the Florida Peninsula and the Keys on the windier, rainy side of this for days to come. Let's just look out over the whole seven day period, All right? The European model has a lot of rain sitting just offshore of western Florida and keeping a lot of the Florida Peninsula in the area where you get several inches of rain. And look at the rain starting to add up in southern Georgia and into South Carolina. The GFS, uh, very similar. You're really ramping up the totals here as it sits and doesn't move very much over the Gulf. Let's hope it keeps that really heavy rain just offshore because a little bit of meandering to the, to the right could bring even heavier rain uh, for the peninsula, especially on the western coast. But in, in any case, several inches of rain uh, for the peninsula for the next few days to come. Now, in the meantime, as the system crosses the Keys tonight, we do have the danger of life-threatening storm surge. So the heavy rain and the wind, those are good reasons to stay off the roads and stay in sheltering. But storm surge could be life-threatening two, three, or four feet of storm surge flooding uh, somewhere here in that storm surge warning area. And then we got the watch up for Southwest Florida. And then Jackie, I fear that we're gonna have to have some sort of storm surge watch or warning or coastal flood advisories or warnings go farther up the west coast north. of Florida yeah. as that sits and spins and strengthens in the Gulf. Yeah, uh, could be worse, Dr. Nab, but uh, not a great setup and certainly something uh, we have to watch on the coast. Just that little bit of wiggle room like you were talking about could really make a big difference in those impacts. Um, one of the other impacts that we're looking at for tonight is going to be the threat of some more flooding and even a few tropical tornadoes. Miami, we're looking at you right now. You know, Miami, honestly, Boy, they've been getting hammered just here north Miami, and they've been getting hammered just down towards your south. Now you're starting to see uh, a little bit more of that heavy rain come in. So we'll see as this uh, sets up over the next couple of hours. But Miami's kind of been shaving off okay for the most part tonight. Naples, you've got 75 degrees. You've got gusty winds around 25 miles per hour. But Naples, you're under the tropical storm warning. But we really think tomorrow is going to be more of your day where you're going to be more in that sweet spot for the threat of a few tornadoes and the stronger gustier winds that are going to be rolling on through. Let's talk about that tornado threat because we could get a few of them here yet tonight. In fact, there's a couple areas of rotation just off the coast near Boca right now that I'm keeping an eye on that uh, could work their way on the shore and turn into tornadoes and cause damage. So don't be shocked if you get a tornado warning. Take them seriously tonight, folks. You know, you're not going to see them. It's dark out. They're going to be wrapped in heavy rainfall. Just trust the warnings. And when the warning is issued, make sure that you get to your safe place place the lowest level of your home away from doors and windows unless you're in one of those flood prone areas and you could risk your life right so make sure that you you deal with all the hazards that you've got coming your way Torcons a two and a three uh, for the rest of tonight so those numbers fairly low but 
when there's a number, it means we've got a risk, and we've got a risk tomorrow too. And that's going to be more of the Naples area tomorrow, Everglades City, still into the Keys, right? The Keys have really uh, taken it on the chin here tonight and will be through the day tomorrow as you'll continue to be in some of those outer bands even after Ada goes off well towards your west. Miami tonight, we're going to be looking at some of those 50 plus mile per wind gusts from time to time. And most of those stronger winds are going to come in with those bands of the heavy rain and the thunderstorms. But that could continue into tomorrow as well. An additional two to three inches of what we're thinking right now for you here in Miami. Let's walk you through hour by hour starting after the midnight hour here for tonight. And the latest uh, high res models are showing continual feeding of that moisture coming into the Miami area and that could be a really rough one tomorrow morning. So if you're an early commuter and it's still dark out, make sure you check in with us here on the Weather Channel. We're going on live at 5 a.m. so we can update you on the flood situation there into the afternoon. It's going to be more southwestern parts of Florida still coming in across the Keys uh, dealing with some of those heavy downpours and yes, the tornado threat as well. As we head into your Tuesday, uh, we'll start to see some of those improvements, but still going to get those gusty winds as Ada continues to uh, slow things down as well. Uh, but Dr. Nav, like you said, you know, we're looking at a, a landfall here, the first one in Florida uh, for the season, which seems so surprising with as many landfalling tropical systems that we had, but uh, Florida getting the one two punch at least this time around. Yeah, they got some effects from Isa Eas and certainly from uh, Sally in the panhandle, but haven't had the center cross land in Florida, but that's going to happen uh, pretty soon here in the Florida Keys and in Tampa. Uh, maybe you don't get the center go right over you, but it might be darn close uh, as the uh, aid is going to come toward northwestern Florida later in the week in Tampa, probably going to be on the stronger wetter side of this system. And before I detailed the uh, cone, I wanted to update you. On, there's you still got that flash flood warning there in uh, Southern Palm Beach and in the Broward County. They've just issued a new flash flood warning farther north into Palm Beach County. So this goes up to Boynton Beach, includes Delray. So a lot of populated areas now going under a flash flood warning till 2 a.m. Again, stay off the roads there tonight. And this is going to be one of the biggest problems. And I'm not sure why it says post tropical cyclone. Ignore that for now because we've got a tropical storm. But in any case, this tropical storm is going to be hanging a right after it sits over the southeastern Gulf of Mexico. There we go. Magical tropical storm, just like I said, and it's going to be perhaps becoming a hurricane as it gets uh, farther into the Gulf of Mexico, but it doesn't put a whole lot of space between itself and Florida. So southern Florida, your flood problems that you're seeing tonight could continue for days and that problem will expand northward because Florida is going to remain on the wet side of this system. Now I want to back up and show you the radar uh, because uh, the system has made landfall and I'm going to uh, try to back up here. Now guys, I'm going to bow out here. Let's take this full so I can show you the radar uh, here. This is where the flash flood warnings are. That's north of where the center is. But if I zoom out, watch this. You're going to see how the center of circulation is down in here in the key. So again, the center of circulation hasn't been the center of action with all the weather, but this is where landfall has occurred here in the middle keys. So the center of Ada has crossed land. That's the definition of landfall in the middle keys. So Key West, you're west of where it has made landfall and in Miami, you're northeast of where it has made landfall. But it has crossed the Florida Keys. So uh, this is no uh, Irma. It's not a Cat 4, but it's still a strong tropical storm uh, coming into uh, the Florida Keys. So again, where the center is is not always where the worst conditions are. I don't think the Middle Keys has been getting the worst of the weather by any stretch. But the location of the center has dictated because of this north loaded system where the worst weather has been. And then again, you know, you get conditions that are arguably a lot more dangerous up in Broward and up in Palm Beach County. So here's where the center is over the Florida Keys now. And if you're in the Keys, you might be thinking, oh, the landfall of a storm? Well, this isn't so bad, but it's going to get worse for you as it moves to the west and to the southwest, because that will put the Florida Keys into the stronger winds and the heavier rainfall later tonight 
into Monday morning and maybe even into Tuesday as you sit on the eastern side of this for days to come. So in the Florida Keys, don't think uh, this is going to be a picnic because it's going to get a lot worse. Same thing for far folks farther north on the Florida Peninsula. As a boy. season doesn't stop for a pandemic and neither do we get the information you need to stay safe every day right here on the weather channel tropical storm ada has made landfall in the middle florida keys take a look at the particulars uh it's a 65 mile an hour tropical storm and it can you see the time on there this is valid at 11 p.m eastern standard time and uh, the Hurricane Center sending out a statement uh, announcing the landfall. And let me show you what, what the, the big picture is. And it's so important to realize that the center of circulation and landfall, number one, doesn't mean that that's where the worst weather is, although we've had plenty of strong wind gusts in the Florida Keys. And it doesn't mean that this is anywhere near over, okay? A lot of times we hear landfall and we go, okay, well, this is ending, not even close. I mean, for Florida, for many of you, uh, it, this is just ongoing. Uh, this is just a continuation of what you've been dealing with for hours and hours. So here's Key West, um, here's Isla Morada, and here's Marathon, and it's in the middle of Florida Keys that the center of circulation has crossed land. That's the definition of landfall, even though land has, be, has been uh, getting uh, affected for a long time. So the landfall is at Lower Matacumba Key at 11 Eastern time as a tropical storm. So this is not a hurricane, but there really isn't a big, big difference between winds of 65 miles an hour and 70 or 75. I mean, really, there's not that much difference in terms of the wind impacts. Pressure, 991 millibars, and that's down a little bit from earlier. So uh, this system is not weakening. Uh, even though it's uh, entangled with this upper trough, it hasn't weakened, but it hasn't been quickly strengthening either. Now, Marathon that's uh, down here, on the, been on the western side of it, been gusting out of the northwest uh, at 35 miles an hour, but then flip to the other side, where it, the winds are stronger, uh, that's where you have a large area that's been gusting 35, 40, 45, 50 or more miles per hour, even a gust of 66 at Fort Lauderdale area not long ago. So again, this continues to be the much stronger side, but we've had, have had gusts in the Keys, you know, exceeding uh, 50 miles an hour um, and had sustained tropical storm force winds down there. And so it's been windy, uh, but it hasn't been as rainy for as long a time. And so on this northern side of the system, this is where we've got uh, a lot of really nasty conditions going on. And I think the biggest problem is the flooding. The flash flood warning there in Miami-Dade County in the, in the Homestead area till two in the morning. And then when you look uh, bigger picture, we've had all these strong wind gusts way to the north of the center. Fort Lauderdale, uh, 66 Pompano gusting to 56 and look at all these reports of flooding going on in Broward County right there in the central part of the county um, and not just right near the coast but extending inland a ways. I've uh, got numerous reports of water covered roads even uh, you know water threatening some structures. Now in terms of the wind you've got a gust exceeding 40 miles an hour all the way up into West Palm Beach all the way inland uh, you know southwest of we've had in southern Palm Beach County and in Broward County where we've approached in some spots, Jackie, a foot of rain. 
Yeah, in fact, just getting new information out of Fort Lauderdale on that rainfall, Dr. Nab. when you add up today's rain plus all the surplus of rainfall that they've had, they're now on pace for the second wettest year on record. Um, so, yeah, this rain not needed. Unfortunately, it's not going to stop here anytime soon. And now we're starting to get some of that heavy rain just on the south side of Miami. That's also where we're seeing some estimates on radar here that the winds uh, could be gusting to around 50 miles per hour right within that band. So uh, we really have three different areas that we have to watch right now where the worst of the conditions are bearing down throughout the area. And on top of all of this, uh, we could see a couple of tropical tornadoes, too. Uh, we've seen a few few areas of rotation kind of work their way in over here uh, through Boca Raton. And then we've got a couple of spots. It looks like offshore. That one in particular looks like it's not quite as tight as it was uh, earlier there. Uh, these are offshore. These are storms that are rotating here. And there are some marine advisories that have been issued off and on tonight. If that rotation holds together, that's going to be trekking in just north of Boca and could produce a tornado. So just a heads up uh, that that's something that we're watching over the next couple of hours. There is a risk of tornadoes from about Port St. Lucie all the way down through the Keys here for tonight. We've got Torcons of twos and threes across the region. So the number's not extra high. We don't have a watching effect, but if you're going to bed here tonight, make sure uh, that you have a way to get alerted, something that's going to wake you up and trust the warnings tonight. Take them very seriously. Tomorrow, we think the greatest risk of tornadoes will be more in southwestern parts of Florida as Ada turns off towards the west. So from Naples, stretching down towards Everglades City, but still Miami and still the Keys uh, are all going to be within that zone. So there is a tornado risk um, tonight and tomorrow. But Dr. Nab, boy, it's really the flooding that we're most concerned about tonight. Yeah, and Jackie, the, the landfall we've just had in the Florida Keys is probably just landfall number one for yeah. the state of Florida. What am I talking about? Well, the fact that it's not going to put a whole lot of distance between itself and Florida over the next couple of days, maybe sitting out here in the southeastern Gulf of Mexico, forecast to get a little stronger, perhaps a hurricane. And then if it holds together, which most of the models say it will, not all, but most, then it could make landfall perhaps as a tropical storm uh, farther north in Florida later in the week. Now, what's up with this Weird looking cone. Well, it's again, it's a, it's entangled with an upper level low right now, and so it's stuck inside weak steering currents. But eventually, high pressure to its east, and the next trough will pick up that combined system and steer it to the north and northeast while not just steering it, but shearing it. So maybe weakening it, hopefully a lot, before it gets to northern Florida, but it could be a strong tropical storm. And then the remnants of it hit the southeast and the mid-Atlantic. We'll detail that in a little bit. Stay with us. Welcome back to a very windy South Beach here in South Florida. I'm meteorologist Mike Seidel. Our continuing coverage here on the Weather Channel of Tropical Storm Ada heading across the Florida Keys tonight. And ahead of it, we've had plenty of wind, wind gusts over 50 miles an hour, and torrential rainfall, not so much here. We've had about three inches of rain so far in Miami, but up the coast, look at these pictures out of Broward County in Fort Lauderdale. We had at least one water rescue, water as deep as waist deep in some of these areas, eight to 10 inches of rain. The fire hose of this outer band has been arcing right into those areas for hours now, and it's gonna be a continuing problem into early Monday morning. Keep in mind, Ada is going to cross the Keys and go into the Gulf of Mexico. So the brunt of the rain will move out, but we're going to have those trailing rain bands, and those will bring additional showers and thunderstorms even into Tuesday, and that's why the flood watch is up until then. These winds knocking down some palm fronds like this one. This will come down and knock down a power line and knock out power, and thousands of power outages. They continue to mount here in South Florida from the wind from Ada. Once Ada moves on through, it goes into the Gulf of Mexico, and by the middle of the week, we'll start to dry out here in Miami and Fort Lauderdale. Dr. Nab? Yeah, Mike, it's been a rough go in South Florida, mainly because of the rainfall-induced flooding, but also because of the wind. And we've got a, a, a tropical storm that's causing some life-threatening conditions, mainly due to water. That's what tropical storms are known for. But we do have some wind issues, and it is forecast to get stronger as it moves away from Florida, but not as far away as we would like. 65 mile an hour tropical storm that is centered right over the middle Florida Keys. Uh, you know, this is 
east of Key West. So Key West, you're on the west side of this, on the drier, not as windy side right now. It's not really all that bad in Key West just yet. Uh, but in the, the extreme upper Keys, you've got a really nasty, not really eye wall, but northeastern, uh, you know, closest band, let's call it. It's kind of a ragged eye-ish looking feature here. And it has crossed the Florida Keys. So the center of circulation crossing land, that's the definition of landfall at Lower Matacumbighe. Uh, as a tropical storm, max winds at the time, not at that location, but max winds of the system at 65 miles an hour sustained, pressure at 991 millibars. And that is placing, you know, Marathon down here on the, on the western side, getting northwest winds gusting to 35. But look at Miami, gusting to 37, Homestead to 41. So if you're on the northeastern side of this, you're getting the gusty winds and the really heavy rain. Look at that nasty area, very heavy rain, just west and southwest of downtown Miami. Homestead and Palmetto Bay under a flash flood warning till 2 a.m. You're relatively getting a break right now, but heavy rains could easily slide back in in a little while. And this band that's been over southern Palm Beach and much of Broward County for uh, much of the day and evening now has slid a little bit farther north, but you know, southern Palm Beach really getting the heaviest rain right now. Thankfully in Broward, for the moment, we're getting a little bit of a break, but the winds are gusting 35, 40, 40 miles an hour, and there's still more banding coming in from offshore. You're still under a flash flood warning. There's just been too much rain for this break in the rain to lessen the flood risk. Please stay off the roads in southern Palm Beach and in Broward County. This includes from Boca up to Boynton, where you've got a flash flood warning till 2 a.m. And we've had some very heavy rains here in the Boca area where it has exceeded locally a half a foot of rain, Jackie. So flash mm -hmm. flooding, a big problem tonight into tomorrow morning. And that's just day one. Yeah, lots of reports of street flooding too and even barricades up, Dr. Nab. Yeah. And we are going to continue to track that tropical moisture well inland down the line into the week ahead. In fact, we're talking the deep south. We're talking the Carolinas. We're talking the upper Appalachians, even into the mid-Atlantic, getting in on some of this tropical moisture. We're waiting for this cold front across the nation's midsection, which is blocked up uh, by an area of high pressure to eventually help to draw this up towards the north. Let's take a look at this as we head through the next couple of days and notice, especially by the middle of the week, Look at Alabama, look at Georgia, look at South Carolina. That is a ton of tropical moisture getting fed into that area. So you know you're going to get some heavy rain and some of the rainfall rates could be enough uh, to overcome uh, drainage systems and uh, ground that's already saturated to lead to some of this flooding. Thursday, still high concentrations of moisture that gets caught up into Washington, D.C., even up towards New York City getting in on this. And then Saturday, we'll finally watch that energy push off towards the east. That drier air will work its way in and we can all look forward to a, a much better weekend. But in the meantime, we've got a lot of rain to look forward to with those heavier downpours. A large swath of rain throughout this region likely to end up with one to three inches, especially into the higher elevations across parts of the western Carolinas. I think three to five inches on the, on the table. I think Wednesday and Thursday will be some of the worst of it. Eat the new DQ load our landfall of Tropical Storm Ada has occurred within the last half hour or so uh, in the middle Florida Keys. And we got to focus on you know, where the center is and how strong the winds are. 65 miles an hour is a strong tropical storm. And it's not that different from a 75 mile an hour hurricane. So uh, this is a potent system, but the status and the winds really haven't been the main story today because it is such a large and sprawling and north loaded system, most of the bad weather and the, and the most life threatening impacts have been over the peninsula. You see Key West not getting it too bad right now on the west side, but as soon as you get up to the peninsula, that's where the rain is heavier. Yes, we've had sustained tropical storm force winds in the Keys, Probably got some storm surge flooding going on, but the really strong winds and heavy rain that have persisted for a long time have been up in Miami-Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach counties, where we've got persistent banding coming in off of the Atlantic. Now, the winds at Miami International Airport have recently gusted to 51 miles an hour, Homestead to 41, Marathon kind of on the west side of the circulation, gusting from the other direction at 35 miles an hour, and the most life-threatening hazard has been flash flooding where we've got a warning in effect till 2 a.m. 
in Homestead and Palmetto Bay. Getting a little break between bands right now, but uh, stay off the roads tonight. More rain is coming to add to the flood problems. Fort Lauderdale gusting to 39, Boca to 40, West Palm to 45. Even inland areas getting strong gusts near tropical storm force. And the ongoing rain problem has not lessened the flash flood problem. We've got flood warning in effect in Broward County till 1145 and some kind of flood warning will get extended beyond that. I'll show you uh, the broader picture on that in a minute. And then just north of that from Boca up to Boynton Beach, we've got a flash flood warning till 2 a.m. These essentially treat them as stay off the roads warnings. That's how people are getting into trouble tonight. And if you look at the big picture, the Weather Service has a broad flood warning. Now, and these aren't areas everywhere where you've got flash flooding, where the flooding is, uh, is ramping up quickly, but all the way from north of Boca in the Delray area, all the way through Metro Broward and Metro Miami-Dade, it, it ends just north of that flash flood warning homestead. That whole area is under a flood warning. So everybody in southeastern Florida, stay off the roads tonight. There's just too many areas where water is covering roads and canals and uh, other areas, low spots are potentially covered in water. And at night, that is way more life threatening than it already is during the day. And look at how much rain has fallen over such a large area here, especially southern Palm Beach and in Broward counties where we've had radar estimates that have easily exceeded half a foot of rain and that we've observed up near a foot of rain. So this is going to be the problem uh, overnight tonight into tomorrow morning uh, for much of South Florida. And then Jackie, this flash flood watch goes all the way through Tuesday evening. It'll probably get extended in time and yeah. expanded farther north as Ada sits pretty close to Florida for days to come. Yeah, and just a reminder for folks that are early risers too, right, Dr. Nab? It's dark mm -hmm. out when people go to work yeah. uh, this time of the True. year too. And so just Good a heads point. up to be very careful on your way into the office if you're not working from home uh, tomorrow. But this is going to be on going for days to come. We've got a long ways to go still with Ada. Uh, this is moving northwesterly now, but it is going to get pushed in more of a westerly direction through the day on Monday and even into Tuesday. We are waiting for this dip or this drop into the jet stream to eventually pick this up and pull it on up towards the north, but it's going to take its sweet time in doing so. And while it might sound like a good thing that aid is going to be off the shore and not over the land in Florida, what it's going to do is it's going to continue to keep that area. You know, it's that right hand side of the storm where the worst of the conditions always are. So we're still going to have certain issues. We're still going to have heavy rain and flood issues, rough surf, rip currents, all of it. And then that moisture will get fed up into parts of the southeast. We're talking to you, Georgia, into South Carolina and eventually working its way into North Carolina and the mid-Atlantic states. So this will show you the latest computer model forecast, the spaghetti models, each one of those little lines depicting a possible track for Ada and look at the strong consensus, right? When you see all those models clustered together like that, we have high confidence in where it's going. So that westerly track and that slowdown, uh, very well forecast here. But then all of a sudden we start seeing all these loop-de-loops -loops out here. Uh, we've got the GFS, which is going out into the central Gulf. We've got storms that bring it closer towards the northern Gulf and others bring it into the Big Bend area. So still a question mark as to exactly where this is gonna go, but it does look more like that right-hand turn event Let's bring in Dr. Nab once again. Uh, you know, this is kind of a crazy path that this has been taking, and, and Ada's been doing crazy things, so it seems, since the very beginning. Yeah, and it's lasted a long time, and what you just showed about it lasting into the weekend, remember, it formed as a tropical depression on Halloween, and if it lasts to this Saturday, Jackie, it would be setting a record for the longest lasting November Atlantic tropical cyclone ever. So many records and what 12th named storm or 12th landfall this year. That oh, was also a record that just happened too, Dr. Yeah, and, and most of them in the Gulf of Mexico it just keeps going on. Now I wanted to show you some other systems that have done a, a similar thing. And, and, and the reason Ada has lasted so long is because it formed as a tropical wave in the Caribbean and then it didn't have high pressure strong to the north to just scoot it along. 
right? Uh, this area of low pressure to the north has brought it northward and then has absorbed it, essentially. They've merged and they're going to hang out waiting for the next trough to come. So this pattern has allowed for a long lasting system. So again, this is the forecast of a tropical storm on Friday. If it lasts into Saturday, it'll set that record uh, lasting two weeks in November. Now, Cuba hurricane of 1932 formed on October 30th and lasted till the 13th of November. So it lasted two weeks, but it was only the first 13 days of November that it was an active tropical cyclone and a deadly one at that, over 3,100 fatalities in Cuba. But then Gordon lasted for 13 days in the middle part of November in 1994. Does this track look just a little too familiar? But again, if Ada lasts, until this Saturday as a tropical cyclone, it'll set that record for longest November system at two weeks in duration. Intra Some of the video that we've seen of the power of Tropical Storm Ada that's been lashing Florida all day today. And that was when the sun was up. And now we're seeing some of the worst of the conditions uh, with heavy downpours, strong gusty winds. Uh, thousands of folks are here without power tonight in South Florida. In fact, about 45,000 of you. Welcome back to our special continuing coverage of Tropical Storm Ada. I'm meteorologist Jackie Jarris. Our hurricane expert, Dr. Rick Nabb, is going to join us in just a second. But Ada has made landfall now just south of Isla Mirada in the Florida Keys and it's continuing in a northwesterly direction right now. Maximum winds are 65 miles per hour and we're getting some pretty strong gusts now uh, across uh, southeastern parts of that state right now. Here's the latest forecast cone showing you a slow uh, movement with this storm as we head through the day on Monday and into Tuesday as it moves off towards the west eventually is going to get drawn back up towards the north and likely make a second landfall in Florida by late in the week. Now notice the forecast wind speeds does bring it up to a category one hurricane while it's over land, but we do think it's going to be encountering enough wind shear and the water temperature is a little bit cooler closer to the coast up there uh, where we could be uh, seeing some minor weakening of the storm as it approaches that area. In the meantime, we've got hurricane warnings remaining in effect across the Keys and hurricane watch from Miami over towards Naples. Those areas are also under tropical storm warnings as we speak and you've been getting those tropical storm conditions for hours now. Our latest wind gusts report up to 51 miles per hour now in Miami. We're getting reports of some power flashes on the south side of Homestead as we speak and it's been these persistent bands that have really been the big problem all night long where we've been talking about what six to eight hours now of steady heavy rain especially into parts of Broward County. A few tornadoes will be possible but the greatest threat and the most widespread impactful threat will be the flooding. Lots of roads are closed down tonight. Barricades are up and a lot of places covered in water. This flood watch stays in effect through Tuesday evening. So this gives you the idea. Our ground is already saturated here. The rain continues to come down and aid is going to stay off towards the west of Florida as we head into late Monday and Tuesday, but is going to continue to bring this rain in across the region. So you're not going to escape 
the bands, meaning our rainfall forecast bringing a widespread one to three across South Florida. But look at some of those darker gold areas. That's where we could see three to five inches of additional rainfall. On top of all of this, that onshore floors flow is going to continue. Storm surge of two to four feet across the Florida Keys and into Florida Bay, one to two feet a little farther up towards the coast. And look at that, even up toward Jacksonville, uh, we could get two to three foot surge. So, you know, get up there around three feet, and that is certainly life threatening. That's the latest on what's happening with Ada. But as we know, hurricane season goes through the month of November. So Dr. Rick Nab is joining us now, our hurricane expert. And Dr. Nab, say it isn't so. We've got more to keep our eye on out there still. Well, unfortunately, history teaches us that the really busy seasons overall tend to be kind of long lasting mm -hmm. as well. 2005 certainly was that way. Other years have been that way. So this is not going to be our typical November where we can think, well, we've got one more storm here. This surely is done? the last one, right? Mm, maybe not. We've got two more areas to watch in areas that often lead to development late in the season. One is the Caribbean, where Ada formed, where the waters are still very warm. The shear can be pretty weak. And then you can get these non-tropical systems taking on tropical characteristics in the middle of the Atlantic, farther to the north. So those are the two areas that we've got to watch. First, what is Invest 97L is a non-tropical area of low pressure. It's going to affect the Azores and points farther east. It's just a matter of what kind of system it's going to be. Four out of ten shot that it's going to be a tropical or subtropical system as it heads farther to the east. And then we got a tropical wave that's moving into the Caribbean that's got a three out of ten shot of forming in the next five days. This is the same area in which Ada formed kind of the same way. So, Jackie, it's not a real big surprise that this kind of formation can happen. If it just happened a couple weeks ago, it can happen again and again. Indeed. All right. Thanks so much, Dr. Nab. Uh, well, we want to get back to what's going to happen down the line with Ada. And uh, because folks into the southeast, into the mid-Atlantic, across the Carolinas, even into the northeast need to pay attention. You might say, oh, this is a Florida problem, not just a Florida problem. This is going to affect a lot of folks, millions of Americans from Atlanta to Charlotte up towards Washington, D.C. That cold front across the nation's midsection, that's what we're waiting for to eventually track off towards the east and kick Ada out of here. Find Finally off the eastern seaboard, but high pressure is slowing this down and blocking up that pattern. So it's going to take a number of days before we get a lot of progress with this. So a ton of moisture is going to come into Georgia, into South Carolina, North Carolina. Even look at that up into Washington, D.C. and New York City. Come Thursday, that cold front finally picks up a little bit of forward speed makes its way off the eastern seaboard as we head towards Saturday. Much drier air will then work its way in for the weekend. But notice kind of the tail end of all this, still getting some tropical moisture feeding in across central and southern parts of the state. We'll have more on Ada right after this. The center of tropical storm Ada is heading towards the Florida Keys overnight. Already here in South Florida, palm fronds down thousands without power because of wind gust pushing 50 miles an hour. And we still have a lot of rain to come with flash flooding underway. We'll have the forecast to get an update on that track coming up. Well, tropical storm Ada continuing to affect South Florida right now. Hurricane warning still up for the Florida Keys. We've had a landfall of the center of Ada in the Keys and from Miami up to Fort Lauderdale to West Palm Beach. Uh, we are under a tropical storm warning and a lot of flash flood warnings. And this system is not going to be getting too far away from Florida, even as it moves into the Gulf of Mexico. And then it looks like it's going to make some kind of return trip to Florida. So the Florida Peninsula can be dealing with this system for days to come. Again, the center of Ada made landfall in the middle of Florida Keys uh, an hour ago or so. Max winds at 65 miles an hour, pressure 991, moving west-northwest at 14 miles an hour. So it's headed into Florida Bay and then into the Gulf of Mexico. But look how north-loaded it is. The weather has been worse in West Palm Beach than in Key West over the last several hours, for example, because the max winds have been way up to the north and northeast of the center of circulation. So here is Key West, and uh, up here is the uh, southern tip of the Florida Peninsula, middle Florida Keys. That's where the center of circulation went over. But you can see how the northern side of it has a lot 
stronger returns on the radar, and that's where the stronger winds have been. Yes, we've had sustained winds of tropical storm force in the Keys, gusting over 50 miles an hour, but that's been happening up on the peninsula, gusting over 50, even over 60 miles an hour in uh, Broward County and up into Palm Beach County. And we've got tremendous, persistent, heavy rain bands on the north side there. That's why uh, so we've got so many places under flash flood warnings. I'll show you those in a second, but just to give you an idea of the winds, Marathon here kind of getting into the central region, this eye-like feature of this strong tropical storm. Winds are only eight miles an hour, but you go outside of that, gusting of over 40 miles an hour at Homestead and Miami and Fort Lauderdale. And because of the persistent heavy rain, which is on the increase again, Getting up toward Homestead, that that uh, northeastern closest band to the center is about to come into the area. Flash flood warning till 2 a.m. because of the rain that has already fallen. Now up in to uh, Palm Beach County, still gusting over 40 miles an hour at Boca and West Palm. Even Clewiston, southwest of Lake Okeechobee, gusting near tropical storm force. But the rain has been the biggest problem. And even though Broward County is getting a relative break right now, you're still under a flash flood warning till 5 a.m. That's been extended. Was 11.45 p.m. Been extended to 5 a.m. Just too much rain up to this point and more is on the way. Same thing for Boynton Beach and Boca Raton under a warning until 2 a.m. And then backing out the broader area, essentially all of Metro Southeastern Florida under a broader flood warning that goes all the way until 1245 local time. So if you're not in a flash flood warning, you're still in an area where there could be water covered roads. It isn't rising quickly, but it's just sitting there and at night, it's a life-threatening situation to drive on any water-covered road. We've had half a foot or more of rain in a lot of spots in southern Palm Beach and in a lot of Broward County. And that's why we got the flood risk that lasts all the way into tomorrow morning. And the flash flood watch is in effect until at least Tuesday evening. And that's going to be an ongoing problem, even as the center of circulation gets into the Gulf of Mexico. Many days, Florida's going to be dealing with this. And our Weather Channel meteorologist, Mike Seidel, is in Miami Beach. He's been watching the storm pushing the rain and wind ashore. Hey, Dr. Dab, it's been a very windy night here in South Beach, but not very wet. We've been in between the squalls rotating around Ada. Ada's going to be crossing the Keys overnight, and we will get more heavy rain and wind gusts potentially to 50 miles an hour right here in South Beach. The issues have been just north of us in Broward County. Take a look at the flash flooding, the urban flooding, just about 30 to 45 minutes north of here. There's been training of thunderstorms and heavy rain. This outer band around Ada coming into Broward County and uh, parts of southern Palm Beach County. Local rainfall amounts 8 to 10 inches. The airport last check has had about 7 inches, and now they've had over 85 inches of rain for the year. 14 of that fell last month. So the ground is saturated, and with these wind gusts, we could have some palm trees come down. Already, right here in South Beach, we've had some palm fronds come down. And what happens, these can come down, take out a power line, and cause power outages. And power outages now in the thousands across uh, South Florida, and they will continue to mount overnight. And with these gusty winds, uh, Florida Power and Light will not be able to get their bucket trucks up. As for tomorrow, Ada pulls into the Gulf of Mexico. 